Welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to be talking about probably the most annoying thing, or at least seemingly the most annoying thing inside of Raid Shadow Legends, and that is the arena. So the arena is honestly, I got quite a bit to say about this because when I first started, when I first started this free-to-play account, I was thinking, you know, this isn't going to be too bad. But apparently, the people you're matched with are based on your player power, and the people who I'm getting matched with are only investing in the arena, right? Like, I feel like these people don't work on Dragon, they don't work on Fire Knight, they work on literally nothing besides the arena. Some of these teams are okay, some of them are not a big deal, but some of these teams just seem like, how in the world do you have all those champions maxed out, taken to level 60, fully ascended, but you're only at the same amount of player power as me? Like, you have to be getting rid of everything else and only focusing on the arena. Is that what it's come to? Is that what we have to do to progress through the arena? Because if you go to the missions, and you guys can let me know, even though I already know what's going to be in the comment section, it's going to be probably the similar thoughts, but let me know what the arena looks like where you are. Honestly, bring back bot pages like bots in low level arena don't really matter or change these missions because I'm blowing through all these missions on my account. Obviously, I'm getting stuck on the ones that are time time lock more or less with the void keep, so on and so forth. Uh, but once I get past this, everything else is easy. I mean, we have clear stage seven of the hollowed halls on brutal. I cleared that on day seven, I think. Um, then down here, Fuse Relic Keeper, easy, not an issue whatsoever, just invest in some of those rare champions, no problem, but then reach Gold 1 in Classic Arena, that feels like reaching Platinum or something, like Gold 1 right now feels like so far out of reach, and I don't know what they can do to fix it, I do know one time they had like the bot pages appearing, and that was easy, and I'm not saying we should get to Gold 4, like, this account should definitely not be in Gold 4 by no means, but being in Gold 1 I think is more than reasonable, especially considering the missions that Plarium has lined up. I've been following along that progression, but somehow I'm getting stuck. It kind of goes to show that there's probably something messed up with the mission layout, the, um, I guess, expected progression of these accounts. If you expect somebody to be at Gold 1 soon after they've earned three stars on Stage 7 of Brimstone Path on Brutal Difficulty, which is something I finished like Day 7 of a free-to-play account, okay? Not even a spender. So make sure you guys know that. Um, but besides that, Obviously, we gotta do the missions, right? We have to do this content, so might as well make the best of it and see what we can do to progress. So if you've been following along, which I'm gonna go ahead and assume most of you guys have, but even if you haven't, we're gonna rehash this. So my team for the longest time was Elhain, Hikatoon. I used decreased defense from, I guess, War Maiden? War Maiden until I got Thylessia, but for a little while it's been Thylessia, Elhain, and Shield Guard, okay? So this is my team set up right here. However, once I got Thylessia to six star and I changed her gear up. So if you guys haven't seen her build already, it's been kind of like a hybrid build. I'll go over this a little bit more. But once I got her up, I can do the decreased defense. I'm going to work on her masteries, get a little bit more accuracy. I took Shield Guard out, replaced him with Doom Priest, and took Elhane and actually take took her out of Lifestyle gear. So Thylessia is going to work her way up in the clan boss. She's going to have Warmaster as well. Elhane does still have Warmaster. I'm doing like a very close one key on hard difficulty clan boss. So I've made this switch now to Elhane is wearing a completely broken, a seemingly trash set of gear, right? So a piece of life gear, a piece of obviously mix and match everything. Okay. So just a bunch of hodgepodge stuff makes no sense, except for the fact that it works out perfectly with the stats that she needs. So this is what I want to get across to you guys. So this defense number is not good. We're channeling Satan, satanic energy here. I don't like that. Maybe we have to glyph some of that defense here. But what I want to share with you guys is if you're having a hard time with the arena, I want to share with you guys my team and my approach to this because the arena is difficult. The most difficult thing for me isn't outspeeding the enemy. My high Katoon is sitting at 227 speed and she outspeeds most of the teams. Now, I got to be mindful. Like I can't go in there against Arbiters and expect to win, right? 30% speed aura, measly a 19% speed aura for me. So you got to be reasonable with what you're going against. But I can safely assume that most high Katoon teams I'm probably going to be faster than. And as long as my next to go champions are reasonably fast, as long as they're not sitting at like 150 speed, they're probably going to go before the enemy's DPS damage dealers as well, right? So we have Hikatoon. They may get cut in. I don't have a perfectly speed tuned team. That's no problem. I just want to make sure I go first because that gives me a nice speed boost, speed aura boost, and turn meter boost. So I do like that. Um, Thylessia is the second to go. Thylessia is in a hybrid build currently, okay? So I talked about this yesterday's video, but it was a long video. So you guys probably didn't watch that. Um, some of you may not have, but basically her build is to be faster than my damage dealers. 
Um, she's actually the third to go, sorry. Doom Priest is second to go. We'll talk about Doom Priest. Basically, Doom Priest is just there to give the increased attack. Nothing else even matters. Um, the cleanse is nice, but I'm not really worried about that. She's there for the increased attack. It benefits Thylessia as well as Elhain, and she's faster than Thylessia. If you can get your increased attack champion to be faster than your debuffer, especially if your debuffer does a, an attack, so like Thylessia deals damage, War Maiden deals damage. If you can get the increased attack applied to them, that's going to allow them to hit that much harder, right? So we have Doom Priest going first. Alessia going second, uh, well, technically third, right after Doom Priest. Um, 183 speed, faster than El Hain, it's the number one thing. Um, good accuracy. Accuracy, I'd rather this to be 150. It needs to progress more and more as we push through the content. Dragon Sage 20, I'm going to need about 200, ac 200 accuracy to apply the debuffs. But right now, this is working fine. It applies the majority of the time in the arena, so it's no issue whatsoever. So the hybrid type of build that I've mentioned, basically, what I have on her is crit rate gloves. So the most difficult thing I've noticed is killing the enemy in these matches. So I'm not having a hard time outspeeding people, just having a hard time killing them. Because if I get hit, I'm probably going to die. So I have crit rate gloves, six star crit rate gloves that I got from Farming Dragon, which was super, super lucky. And then I just tried to fill crit rate out the rest of the place I could find. Now, if I wasn't able to get the crit rate close to 100%, which is 97, that's close enough, right? Um, it'll, it'll end most of the time, except for that 3%, which feels like it happens more often than it should. But... I got that crit rate to 97%. Anything else I'm doing is extra damage. Obviously, prioritize eight, um, accuracy and prioritize speed over the crit rate because if you're not landing the decreased defense, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. So focus on those two things. But that's Thylessia. The same build can go to War Maiden. War Maiden can deal some damage on that A3 ability. So if your damage dealer is lacking, definitely allow your debuffer a little bit of boost in damage to hopefully help them out. Same thing with the Masteries. Once she gets her Masteries fully done, she's going to be in Clan Boss. So I'm going to get War Master for her. But all these Masteries are going to lend to her doing more damage. Getting this Master Hexer is going to help increase the duration of the decreased defense. It's all going to be positive things for the arena and dealing more damage. Now, with that said, I've actually taken Elhane, and I may change her Mastery soon. So Thylessia is going to be worked on the next few days. I'll show you guys her Masteries once I finish those. Should be about tomorrow when I have those finished. But Elhane, I'm heavily considering changing her Masteries. Now, once I don't need her in the Clan Boss anymore, I'm either going to switch it to Helm Smasher or Flawless Execution. Flawless Execution is a little bit more tempting because this early on, I feel as if people I'm going with probably don't have that much defense to begin with. So I'm already ignoring 50% from the decreased defense. And then Helm Smasher is going to ignore more, but are they really even having that much defense? Plus, I don't have that much crit damage. If I could, put two, if I could push 200% plus crit damage, maybe then I could switch to Helm Smasher, no problem. But until then... I think I'll just go Flawless Execution. So we'll see. I'm not getting ready to switch it just yet because she still is being used in Clan Boss. She's still being used in Dragon and the Dungeon. So we'll leave it as it is because this ability does do better. War Master does do better against those boss fights because they have high HP, right? But as far as Elhane's gearing goes, you guys can take a look at the piece of the gear. What I've done is I've got lucky and was able to put some crit damage gloves on her. We have a crit rate set, which allows me to be just perfect with the crit rate total. We're a little bit overshot. Um, but I don't think I have any other options for crit damage plus crit rate gloves. Um, so these, I lose 14%. Now this is amazing for the speed, but 14% crit rate gone because of the broken set. I can't afford that. So I'll focus on getting to hundred percent crit rate and then broke all the sets. They don't matter. I'm not going for savage. I don't have the savage gear to push for that. I'm just trying to get the most attack, most crit rate. Well, hundred percent crit rate, most crit damage and the best speed for the speed tune, right? I don't want to be so slow that she's never going to take a turn. But I also don't want to be faster than Dilesia. So the where, where she's at right now, I think is pretty good. We do have plenty of room to grow. We have an uh, HP necklace. We have an HP ring. And we have a defense banner. This should be attack banner, crit damage necklace, and then attack ring. Okay, attack with attack percentage would be ideal. But HP with attack percentage, anything like that, getting some more attack percentage would be so good for her. My goal is within the next few, maybe next week, by next week, Push her to 150% crit damage, maybe a little bit more. Push her to 3,200, 3,500, somewhere around there. Attack, I think, is more than doable. So what I wanted to do today is just share with you guys my arena build, my arena setup that I have right now, kind of why I wanted to switch away from the um, Hykatoon, Thylessia, Shilgard, Elhane, getting the extra increased attack from Doom Priest and taking Elhane and solely making her a strong, as strong as possible nuker as I could was much better. So if you're... Best nuking gear is your lifestyle gear. That's amazing. And for a long time, you're going to have to use that lifestyle gear. But as soon as you can, transition into the gear that actually makes the most sense for the role that they're doing. 
So if they're doing clan boss, life still probably makes the most sense. But if you're really needing to progress in the arena, other gear probably makes more sense. As you can see on my El Hain, everything's broken. So we have two arena tokens right here, and then we have five more in the inbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those. I considered using an arena refresh, but 40, 40 gems on a free to play, I don't think I can do that. But let's check this out. So we've got the increased attack on everybody. This is actually pretty big because Thylesia hits pretty daggone hard. We'll see it here. I mean, 18,000 damage? She doesn't hit as hard if she doesn't have the increased attack on her. So having that increased attack is such a nice boost. Having Doom Priest go before Thylesia, if you have Spirit Host, it works exactly the same. If you have Spirit Host and War Maiden, basically this team is still that core functionality of your basic Hykatoon, Spirit Host, War Maiden, Starter Champion, Nuke. So the core functionality, similar setup, everything's the same. It's just these are like the next level. Basically, it's a basic speed team what we have going on here. Hopefully, we can kill these teams. These are the kinds of teams, though, that I was having trouble with. These teams that are not fast, but they're level 60. They've probably been, been invested in enough to actually take some hits. We'll see. Maybe not. But if I don't kill them, then I'm going to get killed. So especially this reaction. Why? Who thought what player employee sat down and said, you know, if we take arena, which is already difficult, but we give champions a, an accessory that allows them to take no crit, so just a regular hit, and we put that on champions who are already overpowered in the arena, as in like mismatch rating wise, and they take no damage, and they get an attack, that's a genius idea. Um, reaction doesn't feel as bad on like my main account where I have some different answers for it, but here, and I'm sure you guys <laughs> ran into the same thing, where you run into a team, you think you can nuke them down perfectly fine, and then boom, reaction procs, and now they're probably gonna kill you because reaction is just an accessory, especially if it's a ring, it doesn't take up that much stats, and they're probably gonna hit pretty daggone hard. It's just annoying, right? So that's a little bit of a frustration. The arena when I first started though, I thought it was gonna be easy. I thought we were gonna be smooth sailing. I push up to silver four pretty quickly. I'm like, dang, we're going quick. And then the brakes just got slammed on. It seems like the more we progress, the harder it gets. But right now, since getting Thylesia to six star, getting her invested in as far as the gear, giving her that hybrid build, throwing Doom Priest in for that 50% increased attack has actually made a significant difference in the team. That 50% increased attack is better than having Shield Guardian here as a mediocre damage dealer. So solely focusing on Elhane as a damage dealer, this can go for anybody wherever you're at. Now, I don't recommend doing this if you're using whatever champion that is in the in the clan boss heavily and it's your main damage dealer. You're probably still going to need Lifesteal Gear, but if you can make the switch, it could very well be worth it. If you have somebody doing Leech, like if I had an Ugo on the clan boss doing Leech, I very well would have no problem with keeping Elhane out of Lifestyle Gear because Leech is basically Lifestyle Gear. It's a, it's a weaker version, right? But it has similar enough features that I would rather use my better gear to get more damage out of Elhane. I'm going to have to do more Spider though because I really want that crit damage necklace. Like I really want that crit damage necklace. Now here, I think we should be faster. A Lady Kimmy's a little bit worrisome because she can really mess stuff up. But like I said, I get tuned. I feel pretty confident in most of my matches of winning the speed races, which is something whenever I was logging into some accounts on my stream recently, I've noticed that people don't focus on speed enough, especially newer players. So if you're not fast enough, do Dragon, higher, however high of stage you can do, preferably stage 16, stage 13 isn't bad, stage 20 is the ideal stage when you're early on. But if nothing else, farm the campaign, the Palace of Aravia, and get yourself some good speed gear. The speed boots, five-star speed boots make such a massive, massive difference inside your account. Hopefully I kill this Ugo here. I didn't kill the Ugo there. Unfortunately, boom, we'd kill her there. Can Elhane fall over and die? She sure can. She sure can without an issue. Let's see this team. So miscreated monster, pretty tanky dude. Uh, we're going to go into it though. We're going to go into it full force. Hoping, I'm going to check my, def my defense log after this actually. My defense may do pretty decent. I mean, I think most people probably assume they're faster. Hopefully I'm actually faster. I guess we'll see by the defense log. I think most people always assume they're faster. I don't know. Later on in the arena, I always assume I'm slower. But my account, my main account, is kind of slow in comparison to where some people are at. Some people running 400 plus speed. Absolutely insane. My main account, three, 365, somewhere around there. So this is this was smooth. These teams I'm faster than. It's getting easier and easier to kill them. Let's go ahead and see the, uh, the arena log real quick. And then we'll do two more matches, and then we'll go ahead and wrap the video up. So we have a few wins scattered throughout. Uh, the teams that are beating me, six, oh, dang. Septimus, Sill the Drakes, you know, just typical teams you have 
at level 49 with 350,000 player power. Septimus, fully ascended. Sill of the Drakes, mostly ascended. Um, am I just am I just salty or <laughs> that's what it feels like almost? But some of these teams, I'm just like this is a good example. Like this person has a scar torsus, one, two, three, four, fully ascended, rank six champions, who I would assume are mastery. This guy looks like he knows what he's doing. 399,000 player power. Let's look at me. 323,000 player power. So I'm getting matched up with them. No fully ascended legendaries. Um, got one, two, three, four, five, six stars. So I've got pretty good six stars. It just seems almost a little bit odd, like so close in player power. Now, obviously, this team may not be the best setup. I mean, this guy's using Scar Torsus, who, what kind of aura does he have? It's not in the arena, is it? So, Scar Torsus right here in dungeons. Yeah. So, the arena is not really a dungeon, but I guess he probably did speed run my team. So, maybe he thinks it is a dungeon. But either way, let's go ahead and do a few more matches here. Let's scroll through the bottom of the list. Uh, we get plus 12 down here. We got plus 7 up here. So we can get some plus 12s. It'd be nice. Let's see. Let's put my, my theory to the test that I was faster. Now, this is actually a good team setup. So if they're faster than me, it's going to be ugly because they have a fast Psychotune, probably a Termier drop from Rosin, Stun from Astralon. They are faster, and it's going to be nasty. So this kind of team, this I was asking for this, okay? I knew they were better set up. I knew, knew they are most likely going to do better. So this one, to be expected. But it's still kind of odd that this guy probably has like 400,000 player. Yeah, so 400,000 player power. Towards the bottom, it's going to be the harder team. That's to be expected, right? This dude has level one War Maiden for the bait. doesn't matter if level, War Maiden's, or not War Maiden, High Katoon. doesn't matter if she's level one or if she's level 60. Well, six star fully ascended, she will get higher base speed, I do believe. So I took the bait and got destroyed, I do believe. But we do get the cleanse there, which I do really like. Uh, let's see what, if she can do some good damage. And then hopefully, oh, dang, she hits so daggone hard. I'm kind of tempted to just use the uh, A2. Well, let's use the A3 instead. Boom. Dilesia smacks. She really does. I'm very, very impressed with her damage overall. But guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully, maybe you learned something as far as the arena goes and kind of like what my thought process is behind the builds of my champion and my transition from double DPS to now decreased defense plus an increased attack champion and taking El Hain from lifestyle gear to just full damage dealing gear. Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you guys follow along. But either way, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Okay. Hope you guys have a great day. Catch y'all next time.